Hey everyone, Rat Benatar here from the All Rats team, part of the Third Web community. And today, we're talking about how to create the ultimate NFT drop with Third Web and Mint Party. Mint Party is a platform designed to empower project founders and community managers with a wide array of super powerful community building tools. Their aim is to take tasks that have traditionally been time consuming and difficult, if not impossible, and make them as simple as a few button clicks. As this mission is shared by ThirdWeb as well, we just knew that we'd have to make a video showing off how to combine both services in order to make the ultimate NFT drop. As always, if you enjoy this content, please be sure to give the video a like, subscribe to our channel, and share it with a friend who may enjoy it. So let's set the scene real quick and say that you're one of the many thousands of project leaders out there who fits this description. You haven't launched your project yet, but you do plan on launching sometime in the next couple months. You have a Twitter account and a Discord set up for the project, and you either have an audience or you're actively working to grow it. If that's the case, chances are you've thought about setting up an allow list. And that's where Mint Party comes in. Mint Party is a great service that gets you up and running quickly at mintparty.xyz. They have a full instructional guide on all the clever ways that you can use their service, which I'll include in the description of this video. We'll just be sticking with allow list building today, but I highly encourage you to check them out in full and get creative. In Mint Party, we're going to set up a new project and ultimately choose to set up a campaign. The campaign is where I get to set the criteria that dictates whether or not users can join my allow list. I can set up all sorts of requirements for this, especially between Twitter and Discord. For example, I can require users to like, retweet, and reply to a given tweet, or I can require that they be a member of my Discord and have a specific role attached to them. I can even make sure that they hold a given amount of any given token, whether it be another NFT or any ERC-20 token. I can even ask a number of short questions and require a response to them. Finally, I can set this up so that it's either working as a raffle or on a first-come, first-served basis. This is good to consider if you feel that you have a handle on your audience size and expected response. It can also be helpful if you're not quite sure the best date and time to offer this to your audience. So if you leave this raffle button turned off, it's just going to take whichever 100 people get there first. But if you leave this turned on, then you can accept more than 100 respondents and it will automatically choose 100 winners for you at the time of closing. Now, you may be wondering, I want as many sales as possible on my project, so why would I put up restrictions that prevent certain people from signing up? And that's a very natural first reaction. Here are my top two reasons for you to think about this. One being quality over quantity. A place like Twitter is ripe with bots and spammers that can fill up your list real quick, and then they never end up actually buying anything. And reason number two, you want to make sure that you're rewarding your most loyal fans for the time and work that they've put in. Because if you have members of your community that show up to Discord every day and talk about you on Twitter every day, they likely should be rewarded for their efforts by getting one of these more exclusive spots. Once you're done with the configuration, be sure to check in with the Mint Party Guide on all of your publishing options. For now, I'm going to publish this and allow for my list to build up. Okay, Mint Party's done for the time being, so let's go ahead and configure the third website of things. I'm going to show you how to take full advantage of the list that we're building through Mint Party by incorporating things like a schedule of claim phases and a delayed reveal. Since I'm counting on people being able to claim the tokens for my upcoming collection, I'm going to deploy an NFT drop contract. This is also what's going to allow me to batch upload my entire collection in one go, and set up a delayed reveal. My contract's been deployed, so here's where I'm going to batch upload my art and metadata. If you need assistance with this, we have full instructions with a template right here on this page, as well as prior videos walking through this step in more detail. Next, I'm going to choose a delayed reveal, as well as include one of my favorite new features inside of ThirdWeb, the ability to shuffle the order of the NFTs before uploading. Now, a delayed reveal means that at the time of this drop going live, when people claim their token, they're not going to see the final form of the artwork or its metadata. 
Instead, it's going to be a placeholder image that you come up with and placeholder metadata. We'll talk in a minute about how to structure the timing of this delayed reveal to have the most impact on your drop. Next, we're ready to set up the claim phases for this drop. A claim phase is what will allow me to schedule time slots in advance to help dictate things like the price that somebody pays per token, the amount of tokens that person can claim at any given time, or even which wallet addresses are able to claim at all. And of course, that's where our allow list comes in. So let's pause to check in and see how Mint Party did for me. Great, my list is full, which means I can export a CSV right from my Mint Party dashboard. Here's finally where this all comes together. I'm going to set up my three claim phases in a very intentional manner so that nearly everything runs on a schedule. This will help minimize any manual oversight needed throughout the launch. Phase one is my allow list phase. I'm going to open this up on Monday at noon. Of course, I want to set this up so that it's open for allow list members only. So to make that happen, I'm going to adjust my first claim phase to say that only specific wallets are eligible to claim and then upload my CSV from Mint Party. As this phase is effectively a pre-sale, I don't want to risk alienating the rest of the general public. So I'm going to change the amount of NFTs a given person can claim from unlimited to three and the amount of seconds between claims to unlimited. This will just ensure that my allow list members alone cannot mint out the collection. I will be rewarding them one last time though by setting this price at a discount in comparison to the public mint price. Phase two is the public sale phase. I'm letting the allow list sale run for 48 hours, so I'm going to have my public sale open on Wednesday at noon. And for this phase, I need it set up so that it's open for any and all wallet addresses. Since this is the public sale, I'm going to be a little bit more lenient on how many NFTs a given address can claim. I still don't want to run into a situation where one or two people can front run the entire drop and take everything. So I'm adding some restrictions, like setting the claimable amount per transaction to 10 and the wait time between transactions to be 10 minutes. I'm also setting the price to the full public sale price of 0.04. And finally, remember our delayed reveal? Well, in setting up this final phase, I'm going to have it timed with the revealing of the artwork. Having a brief, well-timed window between pre-reveal and post-reveal can do wonders for your project's activity. With that in mind, we'll open up phase three on Friday at noon, and I'm going to remove all purchasing restrictions. Any wallet can come in from this point forward and claim as many NFTs as they want at the public sale price until we're sold out. With my claim phases set, I'm ready to save them. These phases will just automatically kick in on their own and transition from phase to phase when the time comes. The only thing I'll need to manually take care of is to reveal the artwork right on Friday at noon. And that I can do in about 15 seconds right here from the third web dashboard. So there you have it. Mint Party and third web are really powerful tools on their own, but we think that when used together properly, it can make your new project drop super exciting and really with very limited oversight. My question of the day for you is this, what other third party tools out there besides Mint Party do you want us to take a look at and why? If you don't have an answer for that, then just let us know what we can build next to make your life just a little bit easier. Finally, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss the next one and share it with a friend who needs to see it. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.